Are you looking for professional training in forensic mental health? I'm Martin Selbaum. Um, I'm an associate professor of psychology at the University of Otago in New, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, it did take me a little while to get here, but um, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, I'm going to share with you over the next two days some information about the MMPI 2 RF and especially using the MMPI 2 RF in forensic psychological evaluations. This is um, what most of you guys have been waiting for given uh, the, the general theme of uh, the workshops here and uh, in the title of my uh, uh, workshop in general is, is to talk about forensic applications. And uh, that's pretty much what we're gonna do for the next day and a half is talk about using the MMPI 2 RF in a variety of, of uh, forensic uh, uh, contexts. Uh, there, there's different broad topics that I want to cover. Uh, the first one being addressing challenges to MMPI 2 RF based testimony in court. Now, I, I usually talk about this in, in great detail and we'll do, do so today as well. Uh, but I will tell you, for, at least from anecdotal experience, maybe it's because most lawyers would view me as an MMPI 2 RF expert and therefore not going to get after me in court on, on this topic so much. But usually I don't have to defend my MMPI 2 RF based opinions uh, very often or really at all, but I know others who do. So I do like to talk about this. This used to be a more important topic back in the day when the test was brand new. Now when the test has been around for almost 10 years, um, it's becoming less and less of an issue, but I still think there's some important things to discuss. So here we look at the profile, cannot say it's fine, RIN T-score 34, just like the profile we just looked at. This person is very careful in, in, in presenting a particular uh, uh, response. We see LR at T-score 76, KR at 55. So he's saying what? Great. I'm a great person. FR 120, FPR 120, FS 107, RBS 114. It's like, this is just indiscriminate over-reporting. You know, it's not only over-reporting psychotic symptoms, it's over-reporting everything. And then you look at the substantive scale. Every single scale is elevated, pretty much to the ceiling. This is an extreme case, but nevertheless a real case. So this is sometimes what you'll see. I'm not gonna show any other scales. But this is quite nice corroborating evidence. You have MFAS results, you have the RF results, you have him not being able to quite even keep it together when he's trying to talk about his psychotic symptoms during interview. To learn more about Concept's professional training opportunities, visit us at concept-ce.com.